When people talk about generative AI, most think of research, text, images, video, voice, music, or code. But the platform I'm showing you today goes deeper. It turns still images into explorable 3D spaces. And for me as a designer, that changes everything. Because it means you're no longer relying on the AI's best guess of what a scene should feel like. You can shape it, reframe it, even reinterpret it. That opens up a whole new way of seeing. So let me take you into the world of Marble World Labs, where a single image becomes a world you can walk through. The other day I was skipping through various YouTube channels when one phrase caught my attention. Interactive worlds. That was all it took. What, where, how. My curiosity was immediately triggered. That's how I found out that Marble World Labs is still in beta, and that access is only granted on request. So I did what any excited keyboard warrior would do. I signed up, hoping to gain access to their fascinating new AI universe. A few days later, I was in. What I've learned since then, and what I've built, tested, and explored, I'll walk you through today. Let's go. Possibilities and examples. My first question was simple. How does this even work? Are there guidelines that help you get the best possible results? Are there limits to what's possible? There is an answer to each. And yes, it's worth understanding them. But instead of getting lost in theory, let me show you a few examples that really lit the spark for me. We'll talk about the process in a moment. For now, this is all about inspiration. Here's a grid of 12 scenes. Each one is a world we're about to walk into. And all were created using different input methods. Via text prompts, a few from preset images, and many from custom pictures I uploaded myself. What they all have in common is this. A bit of planning, one click on generate, and within minutes, the world is ready. That moment alone is pretty stunning. We start with an old fortress buried in ice. At first, every space is initialized by the AI. That's why we see these floating point clouds. This world was built from a text prompt. And just imagine the possibilities this opens up. For games, trade shows, immersive experiences, you immediately want to go exploring. To make the effect more dramatic, I place the camera high above, almost looking straight down. Let's jump in. In the second example, we're looking at what Marble calls an ancient temple entrance. The level of detail, the lighting, the mood, or better said, the feeling you get from this space, is seriously impressive. Now here's a fun one. A mid-journey image of a music studio in Goa, sometime in the early 80s. You've got the posters, the mixer, a comfy-looking sofa, and something that vaguely resembles early Adobe Premiere Pro. These were the days of VHS recorders and curved 4x3 TVs. The only thing that concerns me, where's the exit? At least there are speakers to blast out a warning if needed. And the journey continues. You probably remember my short film, The Fenrin Throne. This fortress wall is an actual location from that storyline, set in the year 1428. You can walk and walk and walk. Just imagine how you could use this kind of setup. Hit the zero key and you're back at the starting point. If you don't like it, just move to another position. Take a screenshot and you've got a perfect start frame. Some of these worlds are a real treat. This one, for example, is based on a mid-journey image in a very particular style. Let me walk you through three linked scenes. At first, I'm outside the buildings, just taking it all in. Then I step inside what looks like a guild hall. Now I'm indoors. And I have to say, the lighting, the architecture, the vibe, it all feels incredibly coherent and not just at first glance. Back there, there's a door. Let's walk through. Suddenly we're in the King's Hall. Notice how the visual style carries through across rooms. And yes, technically this is just a static image, but here I am, walking through it. That alone is kind of amazing. And it doesn't stop there. I went all in and fed Midjourney some very specific, stylistic directions. Here's one that leans toward photorealism a Japanese temple in a misty forest. The trees give the space real depth, and the buildings you see around me were added by the AI based on its internal prompt logic. This one here also fascinates me. If you've worked with Midjourney, 
you might know about SREF codes. This style uses a specific reference, a Japanese illustration technique with bold lines and a blue-orange watercolour feel. When I look around, the ceiling, the side room, the paintings on the wall, it all fits. Over there, wooden planks are stacked against the wall like a quiet little Easter egg. And it gets even more interesting. This one also started with an SREF code. The prompt I used was simple. An empty dwarf mine. As I walk through the tunnel, I eventually reach the exact image I used as my input. Marble's AI is able to take that image and build out the surrounding space with depth and logic. I can even turn around and see where I came from. All of that imagined by the AI. I can generate entire cathedrals. And here's something I've noticed along the way. The larger the space, the more there is to explore. And the more freedom the AI seems to allow. Now here's an example where I actually change the prompt. If you think the AI handles everything on its own and leaves no room for creative influence, you're wrong. Take this example. Both versions are based on the exact same input image. A room with a fireplace. But the prompt changes everything. In the first case, we're looking at a cosy winter setting, which Marble labels Rustic Cabin Winter Retreat. In the second version, I asked ChatGPT to rewrite the prompt, and suddenly, the same house appears in a desert, complete with a surprisingly convincing dune in the background. Now to example 11. Imagine a blue room with a few pieces of furniture. Shift your thinking from observer to director. Let's say the default camera angle doesn't work for the layout you're planning. Maybe you need space to place text on the image. The fix is simple. Just rotate the camera and take a screenshot. That's how you land on the perfect framing for a title. I could go on for hours, but let's end with something more futuristic. We're aboard a space station on its way to Titan, walking through the different modules. This is the observation deck. Pay attention to how well the reflections are handled. It feels like the perfect place for something unexpected to appear. Maybe a life form we weren't meant to see. Does the platform have boundaries? Definitely. And to their credit, Marble makes those limits clear in their official guidelines. I've gathered a few images here that are less suitable for building a world. According to Marble, it's not a style transfer tool. Instead, it tries to reconstruct spatial geometry from the input image. That means any kind of blur, any person or cluttered composition will disrupt its sense of three-dimensional space. So here's the takeaway. Don't focus on people, animals or standalone objects. Think of the room more like an empty stage that you're about to explore. Marble refers to defined spaces with clean lines, strong contrast and high resolution. Avoid blurred shots, wide angles or top-down views. The sweet spot is clean and stylized. That's what the AI responds to best. It also ignores things like mid-journey style syntax. No dashes, no weighted prompts, no vague ideas, and no stacking of camera instructions or keywords in a row. Once you internalize this logic, you can get remarkable results. The room itself becomes the scene, and the fewer visual distractions you include, the more immersive and interactive the outcome. If you don't follow these rules, don't expect miracles. It's like trying to play basketball by kicking the ball with your foot. The rules are there for a reason. And when you hit those limitations, it's actually useful. That's how you learn, which means your next attempt will be better. One more note. If there's a person, or like in this case, a rocket in the source image, Marble will often remove it. But you can ignore that on purpose and treat it as an experiment. Sometimes that leads to surprisingly cinematic results like a mood or scene you'd use as a starting point for a video. That's exactly what I did. The image with the riders in the background didn't really work at first. But by jumping backwards through the space using the dash key, I stumbled into a quiet, atmospheric moment where it didn't matter whether the riders looked perfect or not. I took a screenshot, ran it through ChatGPT, and we crafted a prompt that worked with Nano Banana. That's how this version came to life. And of course, the journey continues from there. Image becomes world, world becomes edited image, edited image becomes video. 
Now let's take a closer look at the platform itself because I want to show you how to actually create a world and how to move through it. The most important part first, Marble World Labs AI is still in beta. That means there's no open access yet. Only users who have been selected by the World Labs team can get in. If you'd like to create your own world, you'll need to set up an account and hope for an invitation. Once that's done, you'll land on a clean, simple interface. Right at the top is Explore. That's the main overview of existing worlds, sorted into categories. On the left, you'll find two important areas. Create brings you to the actual editor, and Worlds shows everything you've built yourself. I've already created quite a few scenes here, based on all kinds of templates, and I quickly learned what works and what doesn't. Everything else in the navigation can be ignored for now. There's a link to Discord, your account, and a basic help section. One final note, since the platform is still in beta, it's very likely the interface will change once it launches. So think of this walkthrough as a rough overview for now. The key area for us is create. So let's click on that. The interface for building worlds is just as minimal as the rest of the platform. You'll see a few prompt tips. They're in line with what I've shown you earlier. Now to the actual creation tools. At the top left, there's image to world, where you upload a picture to build the environment from. At the top right, there's presets to world, which lets you choose from optimized starting scenes. But for now, I'll go back a step. Right in the center is what I'd call the text to world option. Click it and enter a prompt that simply describes a natural scene. From there, the AI takes over. Before hitting next, there are a few more settings to explore. Under settings, you can choose how many output scenes the system should generate per text prompt. I'll go with four. Public mode shares your world on the explore page, and then there's advanced prompting. I'll activate it just to demonstrate what it does. It lets you adjust the aspect ratio and crop uploaded images. You'll also see some excellent examples that highlight how focused and minimal your prompts should be. For this run, I'll stay with an empty command deck in an alien spaceship. That word empty felt important. It tells the AI to avoid cluttering the space with things like tables or chairs, which helps preserve open movement and a visually coherent atmosphere. Down in the corner, you'll see the two currently available models, Marble 0.1 Plus and Marble 0.1 Mini. I tested the Mini version, but the results were rough, more of a sketch than a finished world. The Plus model, on the other hand, produces far more refined results, though it takes about five minutes to render. Well worth the wait. Now I'll click on Next. Here we go. The AI now presents its suggestions. Since I set the output to four, I see four different scenes. I pick the fourth one, but if none of them seemed right, I could just hit regenerate for a fresh batch. I'll go with option four and once again hit next in the bottom right corner. By the way, you can always go back a step by clicking back at the top left. What we're seeing here usually doesn't appear. It only shows up when advanced prompting is activated. You could create a 360 degree panorama or adjust the aspect ratio, but I'll leave both untouched and click next again. Now, the AI generates a detailed prompt based on my short input, using language that helps the system build the scene more precisely. If you're more advanced, you can click the pencil icon and edit this long form prompt to your liking. Back in example 10, I already showed how much difference that can make. Finally, I hit generate to start the build process. This will take about five minutes. While it's loading, let me show you the overview. This is where all your created worlds are displayed. You can filter them by layout or search for a specific keyword, like ship, for example. Each tile shows core details, which model was used, the exact prompt, and even options to reuse or tweak that prompt. And of course, there's a button to jump directly into the world. But before we step in, let me quickly show you the other two ways to build a world, both of which are far simpler. We go back to Create, click Select from Presets on the right, choose this coastal scene, hit Next twice, and then Generate. If you're uploading your own image, make sure it fits the platform's requirements, drag and drop it into the input field, 
click next and then generate. So that was step two, the generation process. Now it's time to explore. When I switch to tile view under the world section, you can tell I've been experimenting quite a bit. From this tongue in cheek floating eyeball to cartoon like interiors and photorealistic environments, many based on images from my travels to Australia, Iceland, and Madeira. To enter a world, just click on its tile. The AI begins loading the scene. And again, remember, what you're about to see started out as a simple text or image input. Before I move around, let's take a quick look at the interface. Up top left, there's the marble logo. That's your back button. At the bottom, you'll find download options for saving the world in various formats. Next to that, the world info panel. And right in the middle, a very handy tool, especially when creating videos, take screenshot. On the right, we've got the control panel. If you've played games before, it's familiar. WASD for movement, space and control key to go up or down. The number zero resets your position back to the world's starting point. Use plus and minus to zoom and the bracket keys to adjust your field of view. I usually go with 75 degrees. Anything wider feels warped, anything tighter too close. You can invert controls, toggle options and close the panel with X. There's also a share icon, plus a few extras on the far right. VR mode, control settings, and the return to origin button. Now I move forward a few steps and rotate the camera by holding the mouse button. I can look around and explore the entire deck. Hitting zero brings me right back to the start. Space and the control key let me move vertically. And since these worlds don't have solid boundaries, I can drift beyond the visible space by simply holding space. It feels a bit like floating into a vacuum, pure emptiness. When I turn the camera downward, I can now see the installation from outside. Using the dash key, I could continue drifting into the void and then hit zero again to snap back to the beginning. So that was the big journey through unknown worlds. Let me wrap it up with a brief conclusion. I find it genuinely exciting to see where AI is heading and what powerful new options emerge when tools like this start to connect. The idea of building your own world based on a single text or image input is nothing short of remarkable. The underlying method for rendering these detailed 3D spaces is called Gaussian splatting. According to Perplexity, the aim is to use so-called large world models, or LWMS, to help AI not just interpret the physical world in flat, two-dimensional terms, but to understand, generate, and interact with it in spatial, immersive ways. Right now, the Marble World Labs model focuses on one space, the room or area you've defined through your prompt or image. As a user, your instinct is to explore, to see what's behind the next corner. The AI renders whatever the 360 degree camera position can see in that moment. So if a column stands in front of the lens, only that visible side is rendered. The rest, whatever lies behind it, remains undefined. If you keep that in mind and avoid placing too many visual obstacles like chairs or tables in the main path, the result can be truly immersive, like stepping into your own picture. But if there are too many objects scattered around, you'll start to notice gaps. You turn the camera and suddenly realise parts of the scene are missing. That breaks the illusion. And I hope I explained that clearly enough. I'm not a technical expert myself. The real secret lies in connecting these individual rooms by exporting them and stitching them together with proper 3D tools. That's how a single interior can become part of a much larger walkable environment, a world of its own. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI, now you know.